Hi, in this video I'm going to cover the getPivotData function. So the getPivotData function uh, only shows up when you have a pivot table. And what it basically does is it just extracts a value out of a pivot table. Now, why would that be useful? Sometimes if you have certain values or certain fields and values that you want to extract out of a pivot table and use it in a dashboard or another tab for a dashboard, and later on you wanted to change the view of a pivot table, maybe you're add, adding different uh, fields to the row label or the column uh, fields, uh, the column fields or the, the row fields, uh, the value that's brought back from the get pivot data function stays the same as long as it's visible within the pivot table. So let's say for example I had changed this there's the values here that have apples 5, 4, 5, 8. This kind of just represents the values here. You can see that it represents that there. Now, if I wanted to add more fields in it, let me go and right click and go under show field list. And maybe I want to add the region down here. And now that's kind of changed. And I don't want to show that change in the dashboard view yet. I just wanted to have it stay the same. You can see that the values here did not change. They pretty much represent the totals of each of the items here. So let's say, for example, I didn't have a get pivot data function in here. Let me go ahead and move the region back up here to the report filter. Let me go ahead and close. Let me move the uh, field list over here down here to the bottom. Let's say this, instead of this get pivot data uh, function here, let's say this just represented the actual cell itself. Let's say I put, just put equal, and that was going to equal B5. So I put equal B5 here, and it still stayed the same, but if I go into the pivot table and go ahead and bring back the region down here to the row labels, you'll notice now that has changed to east, and it's representing uh, B5 here, which I don't want it to represent. I want it to represent that value which was there. So it becomes useful when your pivot table changes, but when you have a view, maybe in a dashboard, that you don't want to change, you want it to bring back that same value. As long as that value shows up here in the table, it will always show up here. Let me go ahead and make this. Let me type equal and point it back over here to that not stay the same here. Now also as I mentioned before these values stay here as long as it's visible in the pivot, ta pivot table. Let's say for example I just have apples and pears and I get rid of oranges here. I take it out of the filter list so it's not visible anymore. What's going to happen is this becomes a error reference uh, reference error. So as long as it stays visible it's okay. If it's not visible within the table it will give you back an error. So let me show you two ways that you can put a get pivot data formula together. Now, this is how it looks here. So if I go, go to the Microsoft.com site, this is their documentation on the get pivot data function. So you notice I had mentioned before, there are three arguments that it takes, the data field. So that data field, let me go back into the pivot table. That data field is going to be probably in here, the values here that you're going to get that that data out of. In here it's going to be the sum of sales, but it's going to be in the values here. So going back into the documentation here, the pivot table is, you can put it, uh, a link to anywhere in the pivot table. Usually when I have it, when you go ahead and select in the pivot table to create that function, it's going to select the, the beginning, the first part, the leftmost portion of the pivot table. In this case, it's going to be A3. So if I click over here, you'll notice that it says A3 here. But it can be anywhere, uh, theoretically, it can be anywhere within the pivot table. Now, of course, the third argument is your field and items. So that's going to be basically the field, the header field, and then the specific, the, the item that's going to be there. So if I go into my uh, example here, it's going to be item. So this is the item here, and then the item is apple. So that's apples here. So let me show you how to quickly write a very simple one. So here's an example of how to quickly write a get pivot data a formula. So I'm, all I need to do is type equal get pivot data. It kind of found that for me. Excel is pretty smart enough to kind of figure out that just a couple words in there. I'll go ahead and double click that. Open parentheses. The data field is going to be sales. So it's going to be the sales data field. And that has to be in quotes. So double quotes, sales, whoops, sales, and then comma, the pivot table. And that's going to be the area, the first area cell. It could be anywhere, but I'll go ahead and type the first area, which is going to be A3, the first cell reference, and that's going to be in a dollar sign, a dollar sign, A3. So that's going to be a absolute cell reference to the start of the pivot table, 
and now the field. The field has to be uh, also in open double quotes. And the field is going to be item. So I'm going to say item. And then the item number or the item value. I'm going to select this cell because I'm going to let it choose. I'm going to kind of type it in and let it let it change while, as I type it in. So here I can type apple or pears or oranges. Right now it doesn't have anything, but let me go ahead and choose that. So it's going to be cell J20. Close the parentheses, press enter. Now it doesn't really show anything because there's nothing typed in here. So if I go in here and type apples, now it's going to show me the grand total here. So basically what it's done, it's going to give me the grand total. Oops, let me go ahead and move this over here. And if I type peers, it will give me that grand total for peers, which is here, and the same for oranges, right? So that is kind of a lot to do when you really think about it. You, know, you have to really think about, you know, where am I going to figure out, you know, how to get the value for the data vet, the data field, and then where's the start of the pivot table? You can notice if I type in like a, maybe I type in a nine, it will still figure it out correctly. So still figures it out kind of nicely. To, Orange is 26305. So it just means anywhere in the pivot, pivot table, you just need to select uh, somewhere in the pivot table. That will kind of bring it back. Now the item and then the field here. Now, that's a lot to type. What we can actually just do when you really think about it is type equal and then go ahead and select a grand total somewhere. So I select this grand total here. It kind of selected it for me. And all I need to do now is just change this value. I can change that to here. And that will give me the same form that I did earlier. And so instead of all that typing, I can just point to somewhere within the table, click it, and the get pivot data function is kind of written out for me. I can just adjust it as needed. So there's a kind of a primer on the get pivot data function. Oh, and one more thing. Um, if you don't see the get pivot data function within your particular Excel, what might have happened is if I, it might have been turned off. So if you go under options, and go under pivot table and go under options here. If this is unchecked, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't really occur anymore. If I select here and type equal and type this, it will just select the cell reference. It doesn't select, it doesn't provide back a get pivot data uh, function. So if I turn that back on, let me go ahead and click here and go and turn that back on here, get generate get pivot data. And I go here and type equal, and I type in here again, click in there, you'll notice that it's come back. So that has to be turned on. That, that, has, that toggle has to be on in order for the get pivot data uh, function to work. Now, that also means that you can turn it off. You don't, if you don't like having the get pivot data always show up when you kind of select in the cell to write any formulas, you can turn it off with that toggle. So there's a quick, brief primer on the get pivot data function. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.